How are you making out in the corona? We're doing fine. We have a, a little oasis that we live in here in Florida because you know the numbers here are crazy. And I, honest to God, not, I, can't, I can't say that I missed the junkets. You know, when I was making this movie three years ago, I always said this is a pocket movie because I felt like people sitting in a theater and laughing at the things that this character says might be embarrassing. I felt like they may become quite self-conscious to know that people saw them laugh at that joke. So in this weird way, Corona kind of helped uh, set the stage for my movie. I'm really just following my calling and being a motivational speaker. Last I checked, you were the subject of a 10 minute student film, not the Green Mile. You can't get this kind of respect unless you a G, her. I'm gonna miss that <laughs> CJ. And then y'all edit that out. Have you contacted your family? Y'all kidding, right? My family probably waiting for me outside right now. They be here. For those who don't know or can't read the little names in the corners of the screen, uh, this I'm Mike D, and, and you're watching Real Black. And with us, this is the very first, my very first Zoom uh, junket press conference. We're here to support Romney Malco, who's got a brand new movie, uh, Tijuana Jackson, which is out. And uh, you know, for the record, I have to say that I really enjoyed it. It kept a smile on my face the entire time, Thank and you. jewels dropped very consistently. Um, you know, and yeah, to let people know who haven't seen the trailer what, what this movie is about and congratulations. Hey, thank you. Yeah, my name is Romney Malco. Uh, you know, you, you may know me from a million little things on ABC. You may know me from old classics like 40 Old Virgin, Weeds, Baby Mama, Think Like a Man. And um, I'm currently involved in a movie that I wrote, directed, and produced and starred in along with Regina Hall and Tammy Roman called Tijuana Jackson. Uh, purpose of a prison and it's about uh an ex-convict who gets out of prison and wants to be a motivational speaker however once you get something on your record the system kind of limits your outreach the system says yo you have to do this you have to do the nine to five you have to get a nine to five and show us a weekly check stub but this this dude's got a bigger dream for himself he's like no i'm an entrepreneur i'm about to blow up i'm about to do my thing and his probation officer played by Regina Hall is like, I'm not letting you go back to jail. So your ass is going to get a job. And so it's this struggle between him trying to, you know, achieve his dreams, but also deal with the standards that the system has set up for him. And it's hilarious. I got to give you all the props on Royal Romney because, you know, you're, you're doing God's work and you're helping people um, believe in themselves the way you believe in yourself. And I, I remember when we were on the radio show, you called in, when you were doing the Indiegogo, this is 2016. Yes. And now we're in 2020. The movie's finally out. Um, it's being distributed. It's coming out uh, this Friday and then later uh, on demand. By the time you see this, you'll be able to go anywhere and click over and, and view this on demand. But um, through Will Packer and all these folks. But yeah, the vision, the vision. Mm -hmm. what, what inspired you to make that transition from, uh, uh, from acting to directing? Um, well, you know, I, I wasn't really hyped about directing this movie. I really wanted to hire someone to direct it and tried to hire someone, but my producers just kept insisting that I direct it. They're like, you can do this. And, you know, I think that the voice of the character, which I've been doing since 1999, was so specific that when he would really boil down to it, I, 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 I had no choice um, but to, a after writing it, I didn't want to write it either. So after writing it and knowing, you know, the nuances and the way that I did, um, I allowed my producers to convince me. They put the batteries in my back and convinced me that I could direct it. And so I followed their lead after trying to hire a few directors. And you know what? I, I liked it. I, I started, you know, as we started putting it together, I have a little behind the scenes tra uh, trailer of, of the overall behind the scenes documentary. And there's this line in it where it goes, it feels like we might actually be making a movie like a real movie because it took a while it took days for me to get to a point of like really believing that this wasn't going to be shut down at some point you know so anyway that's what that's what inspired me really was a, a production team who believed in me just for those who are looking at this and saying hey you know i i like that too like i mean like what's what's a schedule typical schedule like for this and the whole process of once you have the script, I mean, how much time do you really have to actually execute the, the pre-production and the shooting? I was initially prepared to uh, shoot the film for $100,000.
of my own money. Mm. And, you know, the crowdfunding campaign came around and was quite successful and it incentivized uh, investors to get involved. So we hired a, a line producer who did an excellent job of breaking this shoot down into 18 days. 18 days of shooting, uh, I, I want to say that five of those days or six of those days were in Florida and the remaining 12 days were in California, areas of California where I lived in the South Bay, which kind of mimics Florida quite a bit because it's by the beach. And um, a, lot of, a, a lot of volunteers, a lot of people, thank you, by the way, for contributing to the My Crowdfunding campaign. Oh, yeah, yeah, I got my sticker. Thank you. Yeah, you know, yeah thank you. Um, and there's more to come. A lot of the people who contributed to the campaign also contributed blood, sweat, and tears. They came, showed up, and worked, moved boxes, acted, did extra work, um, held the boom. They did, we, listen, we had 40% of our set was just straight up volunteers. So it's just like straight up guerrilla filmmaking, just yeah. way under the radar. Let, 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 let me tell you who was our, let me, let me tell you who handled locations. R Regina Hall. We go uh -huh. filming in a spot and the security guard be like, hey, you got to go. You can't be up in here. And Regina be like, hold on. Let me talk to him. Hey, baby, come in. Baby, let me talk to you. And then she'd come back and she'd be like, he said, it's fine. Y'all go ahead. Just, you know. Try to be low key. Don't get too loud, and please don't block the ro you know, don't don't block the roadway. And we'd be like, "What did you tell him? Don't worry about it, baby. Let's go." <laughs> Head of locations, Regina Hall. Clearly, you had a lot of fun doing it. What makes the movie work is your full commitment to character. It looks like a lot of ad living and and improvising around what was written. You know, you know honestly, know. not a whole lot. Not a whole lot, honestly. Um, it was, we, we, we pretty much did everything that was scripted. Um, there's a guy, the guy who calls himself the communication uh, specialist, he improv that. And, and I think that uh, Regina improv uh, the thing about, um, about the, uh, the stripper who lost a leg. <laughs> Regina yeah. improv that, that was crazy. But for the most part, we kind of sucked at the script because we just didn't have time. You know, when you do improv, the way that the process works is you improv something, you find magic, and then you embellish upon that magic. And we just didn't have the time. It takes a village, as you say, you, it was Indiegogo, as well as a lot, a lot of people coming in during the process. And then, you know, Will Packer Productions coming in and helping to distribute it now. But, and I, through the credits, I see a lot of big names, but a lot of people that you've worked for are credited as well. <laughs> you know, um, I see... Chris Rock and Judd Apatow names of big comedy heavy hitters mentioned in this. Can you speak in terms of like what influence they may have had in, into your style or your approach or advice that they may have given you in the process of making your first feature? Well, these gentlemen, even though they're my age, they started so early in life knowing exactly what they were going to do. And so I actually grew up watching them and, you know, they were speaking um, particularly Chris Rock speaking on behalf of my generation. And so listening to him and seeing what he had to say and the way in which he did it and the things that he achieved, he kind of, in, you know, just like Eddie Murphy, he kind of influenced, you know, my perspective. He encouraged, Chris Rock's commentary encouraged me to look at things, uh, you know, to, to honor my uniqueness. Um, working with Judd Apatow, I learned a work ethic that I, I wouldn't have had I not worked with him and seen the way they go about it and the way they craft stories. And even after we did our movie together, still talking to Judd Apatow and saying, yo, this producer wants to work with me. This producer wants to work with me. And Judd Apatow being like, yeah, but this producer doesn't like to do the work, meaning that they want to put out 20 movies a year, but they don't necessarily want to craft out one effective story. So, and he'd always say, be careful, because if you start doing too many of these flops, you'll end up back in the rat race, which basically means I'd end up, you know, back to square one kind of and i didn't want to i didn't want to do that so these gentlemen th their commentary i've had times when i've worked with chris rock and chris rock just spits so much game he helped me learn so much stuff so all the little nuggets that i've learned all the little bits of insight about camera angles all the little insight i've learned about the way in which you craft a story or the way in which you tell a joke i attribute to these gentlemen because they were they played a major role in, in influencing my outlook and just my overall approach to entertainment I know it's a long way to get to the finish line with this. Again, we were talking about this four years ago. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, just super duper congratulations. And um, people need to just support. Just if, if, if you're complaining about the way things are and you don't take time to support the things you want to see, 
then you kind of get more of the same. And this is a very unique, different film. Thank you. On an intelligent level, not trying to bring things down to the lowest common denominator, but trying to uplift everybody's level of thought through laughter. So I thh- thank you so much, uh, Romney, a.k.a. Tijuana Jackson. <laughs> For me, you know, I, I just believe that if you're going to be a life coach, you got to be a life coach 247 because life is a full-time job. Why you always got to speak in parables? You know I'm going to need travel permits once this take off. I'll think about it. What you mean you're going to think about it? Do you need me to speak in parables too?